Hi, I'm your host, Bastish B, and welcome to Car, Coffee, and Three Reviews. On this show, we're going to do exactly what it says. It's really early. I'm going to go get some coffee so I can do the three reviews of three random games. So without further ado, let's cue the intro. So for my first review ever, I'm going to do Bruce Lee for the Commodore 64. This is the actual Bruce Lee game I bought back in 1985. This is still the original one. This is when video games used to come on tape for real men. So this was the first game I ever physically went into a game shop and actually bought. And Well, my dad bought it, but I chose it. Um, he had bought like a bunch of stuff for us back in the day, like off the Atari 2600, like uh, Asteroids and Return of the Jedi and stuff like that, but this was the first game that I actually went and looked through the whole selection and actually chose it. I definitely chose Bruce Lee because me and my dad had just watched Into the Dragon on VHS and that was obviously a major influence on everything. So. I chose Bruce Lee. I bought it from a computer store. I believe it was called Computer Connection. It was in Pine Town, just outside um, where I used to live in South Africa. Bruce Lee was made by a company called Datasoft. They made a lot of cool software back in the 80s. One or two of my favorites were the Dallas Quest and the Goonies. Yeah, so the object of this game is to get to the Sorcerer's Palace. So how you gotta do that? You gotta go along and collect all these weird lanterns for no apparent reason. Anyway, the lanterns open up different areas. They like open secret lairs and trap doors and you can go to different areas and explore more and get further. The whole place is just full of traps though. Sparky traps and uh, laser floor traps and uh, all manner of death. And not only that, the dude throws this freaking ninja at you with a sword who's just like relentlessly trying to massacre you all the time and he throws in this other dude who's like this green I think he's supposed to be a sumo wrestler but uh, we didn't know what the heck he was back in the day so we just affectionately called him Fat Buddha so Fat Buddha and the ninja are constantly attacking you you gotta like collect the lanterns and open up secret areas and keep going avoiding the traps the traps are like just crazy He's even got like freaking landmines and stuff. One of my favorite aspects about Bruce Lee has to be the two player option. You can actually play the game co-op, which is freaking cool, especially back then. One guy would be Bruce Lee. If he dies, everybody dies. The second player took the role of Fat Buddha. Basically, uh, your friend who was Fat Buddha would try and like keep the ninja at bay while you were collecting lanterns and punch him in the head and then you could give a few kicks to the ninja, kick him into like the landmines or whatever. It was really fun but uh, until somebody punched somebody else, yeah, friendly fire was on. And then uh, the whole thing would go all to hell. Your best friend or whoever was playing with you usually became your worst enemy and everybody tried to kill each other and it usually ended up in game over. So. <laughs> but it was still fantastic. The graphics are pretty simple. It is one of the first generations of games anyway they came out. I think they do a pretty good job. The animation's good, everything. I like the simplicity of it. The 
music, I really like it, especially that intro music. very fast paced, um, the controls are very responsive, it's really fun kicking that ninja into traps, I don't know, like, it doesn't matter how many times I do it, it's just, it's just extremely satisfying, especially the weird sound it makes when a dude hits a laser, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, or when you kick somebody into a landmine, for example, that is like the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, so Bruce Lee on the Commodore 64. Fantastic game. I would highly recommend you check it out. And review number two. Okay, so Wings Remastered is a flight sim slash arcade action game. Very, very light on the flight sim, very heavy on the action. Wings was originally a Commodore Amiga game that came out in 1990, released by Cinemaware. This is definitely how to do an update of a classic game. This is it done right. So I never played this game originally on the Amiga. I just didn't have an Amiga in the 80s. Um, so out of Commodore 64, so I used to just look at this game and all the magazines, Google the screenshots and just imagine what it would be like to play it. Just bear in mind that the internet didn't exist in, its, in the way it exists today. So the way you got information about video games was word of mouth or magazines and that was it. There was no other way. So you just had to kind of imagine what the game looked like, even with the screenshots. So if you've ever played any CinemaWare games, and even if you haven't, it's broken down into a bunch of mini-games. There's the flotsam aspect, where you fly in the plane and shooting down Red Baron type dudes. Then it has the isometric view, which you're flying along and shooting up all the uh, supply lines, troops, tanks, whatever. And then the final one is a, a kind of a top-down view where you do like this bombing run where you go over and blow up all the uh, big factories and all that kind of stuff. Story-wise, Wings is set in World War I. You're a fighter pilot and you're just making your way through World War I. The story is told through correspondence, all the letters you are sending back home to your friends and family, um, you're telling them about what's happening in the war, they're telling you about what's happening at home. It's a pretty simple approach, but it, it worked really well. I really like it. Gameplay-wise, I'm playing it on a PC. I'm using a 360 controller. It works extremely well. It's just smooth. It's awesome to play. I'm really kind of surprised that this game hasn't been put on um, consoles at this point. The graphics in this game are really good. They're very simple, but they they work really well. I'm kind of still partial to the old pixel art style of the Amiga. The new one, the graphics are a little bit too smooth for my liking, even though they're all great. What I like about this game is that you can just put it on and play it for five minutes here or there and go through a few missions and save it. And you, you, know, you don't feel like you are slaves to play this game every day, like constantly. So it's like, it's a very fun, like, arcadey experience. So the company Cinemaware have recently re-released this game in a big box PC game format, which is freaking awesome. So if you want to check that out, you should check out their new website. 
Overall, I would definitely recommend this game to anybody that likes fun arcade games. It's a really good update of a classic game. Download it now. Okay, so my third and final review for the day is for Bloody Wolf on the TurboGrafx-16. Cue the title screen. Okay, so Bloody Wolf is a side-scrolling run-and-gun shoot-em-up. Classic arcade action. Actually, it's based on an arcade game released by Daily East in the late 80s. The Turbo Graphics version came out in 1990. This is a really fun game. It's it's not that obscure on Turbo Graphics, but you really have to look for it to find it. The arcade game is a two-player game. The Turbo Graphics game is a one-player game. That's the only shortcomings it has. But if you play the game, it really doesn't matter. It's still a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> This game kind of reminds me of those 80s Vietnam movies. Yeah, they made so many of them. But especially that one with that bearded karate dude and where he goes and fights that uh, George Takei looking mofo at the end. You know which one I'm talking about. Gameplay-wise, you're just running around like some crazy mercenary dude shooting the crap out of everybody. Uh, you can jump on a motorbike in this game and drive around running dudes over, which is way more satisfying than, it's, than it should be. You go along, you kill everybody that gets in your way. You have to rescue uh, POWs along the way also. These guys give you special items, usually like keys to open up other chests, which you can find special weapons, which is totally awesome. Also, the uh, POWs say a few things to you. It's it adds a little bit of atmosphere to the game, you know. Like it gives a little bit, a little bit of a break from the running gun mad action. The boss characters also have some of the most hilarious names. And you get to fight like a submarine, a helicopter, a bunch of weird dudes. This crazy mofo on a bridge. Um, they're, all, they're all like really cool. What I like about the bosses though is that they not, um, it's not like some bullet hell game where you basically just mash and continue to get through, through a boss fight or you just hope you've got enough lives to survive it. There's total skill based when it comes to the bosses. This game also has a nice variety of weapons. You get the usual grenades. Uh, you can, uh, if dudes get close to you, you can just stab them. Which is super satisfying. Um, you get uh, like this cool spray shot. You know, all the things you usually get in these kinds of running and kill em up games. Very similar to the game Mercs by Capcom. This game is an arcade game, so it's not very long. You can complete it pretty quickly, which is pretty good. I don't like games that drag on. The graphics in this game are really good. It's uh, very close to the arcade. Sound-wise, also very cool. It's got a few extra cutscenes between levels, which the arcade never had. Overall, I think Bloody Wolf is a really fun game. You should definitely check it out. And that about wraps up Car Coffee and 3 Reviews, the first episode. I just want to thank you for joining me. Bastish B on 64K. Please like and subscribe if you thought they were pretty good. And don't forget to check out the end credits for that dodgy movie reference. And I hope to see you soon. Cheers.